you should not buy the Xbox Series Seagate expansion card. Here's why. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Blue Goo, and this is my first rant video. First of many, probably. I don't know. There's a lot of things that make me mad, and there's a lot of things to talk about. So I'm just going to talk about the Xbox Series X and S Seagate expansion card and why it you, sh you should not buy it. You should not buy it. It's ridiculous. It's, I've, wrote, I've written a whole script. It's going to be great. I'm going to take you on a journey. But let's get right into it. So it's mostly about Xbox and the decisions around these two things. The Seagate expansion card and the Xbox Series. So back in December 2019, the Xbox Series X was announced. And other than it becoming a meme with its monolithic rectangle design, it looked pretty awesome. With the later revealed MSRP of just $500, the new Xbox was looking pretty sweet. I mean, you can't you can't get one for that price right now. But I mean, that's uh, no. Anyways, this new console generation finally looked like it could score up with most PCs out there. Well, when they announced their new Xbox Velocity architecture, things got a little. Now that seems great. A blazing fast NVMe inside the new Xbox is a good thing, right? It can run the OS faster, it, I mean the whole thing would be faster, it's a hell of an upgrade from the original hard drive, the disc spinning drive, in the Xbox One, and even the Xbox One X. Well, it is a good thing, but it's, it's not. You see, with the announcement of this new Xbox Velocity architecture, I was a bit worried about what this meant for the storage capacity of the console because something priced at only $500, the NVMe is going to be a pretty hefty amount of that price <laughs> next to the GPU. So then it was revealed that the Xbox Series X would have one terabyte of this NVMe Xbox Velocity fast storage, and the smaller $300 Xbox Series S would only have 512 gigabytes of storage. This isn't including when you install any updates or like the OS itself. You're gonna have less than that. This this is a problem. I don't know why I should have to tell you this, but this storage is gonna be filled up with the super massive next generation games. For example, Cold War, which takes a little over 100 gigabytes. Modern Warfare, I think, is like, it approached 200 gigabytes. And many other next generation games are getting close to 100 gigabytes each. So this is a huge problem. You can just plug in your own external hard drive or SSD and play your games that way, right? And that, no, <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> you can only play Xbox Series optimized games from the internal SSD or the proprietary Seagate expansion card. You would have to transfer any optimized game to the NVMe SSDs from your external hard drives to play them and even launch them. The Xbox Series both of them, have a software lock, preventing you from launching these optimized games from any external drive, no matter if it's an SSD or a hard drive. This brings us to why I hate the Seagate expansion card so much. Not only is it using a proprietary connector only on the Xbox Series consoles, because Xbox is partnered with Seagate using a special connector, the one terabyte expansion costs $220. Oh, but of course, the Xbox Series optimized games must be on these drives because they have such high speeds. Well, the internal SSD of the Xbox Series X is fast. It's about 2.4 gigabytes per second. That is pretty blazing fast. I assume the Seagate expansion is on par with these peak speeds, but it's not listed on their website for the thing anyway. The USB ports on the back of the Xbox are 3.1 Gen... the 3.0... The 3.0, the, US, uh, the USB ports on the back of the Xbox are USB 3.1 Gen 1, which have speeds around 5 gigabits per second, which is like 600 megabytes per second. There, stay with me, I, I know it's confusing, I had to write the script. <laughs> so, the internal SSD and the Seagate expansion are more than double the speeds of the peak USB 3.1 Gen 1 speeds. But they could have easily used USB 3.1 Gen 2 instead, which has speeds double that of USB 3.1 Gen 1 at around 1200 megabytes per second. 
USB is dumb, by the way. I'll, you know, I'll spare you the rant on it right now. But, like, it's, it's ridiculous. But this is what I don't understand. In my PC right now, I have a 500 gigabyte Gen 3 NVMe where I boot Windows and a few other programs like Blender where I'm editing this video. I have a 2 terabyte hard drive for most of my schoolwork and video assets. And I have a 1 terabyte SATA SSD to run the few lucky games I have deemed worthy of these high speeds. My SATA SSD runs at about 500 megabytes per second. That's a little bit, that's, that's about on par with the USB 3.1 Gen 1 speeds. But that's plenty of speed. While the internal Xbox SSD and a Seagate drive both tote speeds more than double that of my SATA SSD, that is a difference of like a couple seconds of load time. They would be a bit faster loading their UI and Xbox operating system though, around the speeds of my uh, Gen 3 in VME where I have Windows. These few seconds of load time being priced at $220 though is ridiculous, especially when they software lock you out of anything else, and Seagate, as of when I'm writing this, only has a 1TB version of their card. Mr. Linus Tech Tips even did a video comparing a SATA SSD, a Gen 3 NVMe SSD, and the newer Gen 4 NVMe SSD, which the Xbox has inside of it, all side by side with different test subjects. The results from this video make it clear that the differences in speeds are not statistically significant enough in gaming to mean anything to the average user. Their video pretty much confirms that Xbox is full of it when they blatantly prevent you from playing on an external drive of any kind. This is clearly a move that was motivated by profit. There are few other reasons, if any, why they would prevent you from launching games from an external drive of any kind. They could even be like, hey, this drive doesn't support Xbox Velocity architecture, and but like allow you to use it anyway because it's it's your drive. It's the restrictions of what I can and can't do with my Xbox that bothers me. I say with my X, I don't even own one. I don't even own an Xbox Series X or S. My friends do, and this is making it hard for me to justify buying an Xbox Series because of this. Look at Sony for instance. Their new PlayStation 5 has an empty Gen 4 NVMe slot, the same as an Xbox, the same. Gen 4 speeds, standard M.2 slot so that anyone with a will can upgrade their storage. You can buy plenty of these NVMe drives on Amazon or Newegg, with almost all of them costing less or just as much as a Seagate expansion, but with double the storage. Sony is not all good though, because even they are preventing the consumer from upgrading the internal storage until a future update. But hey. I love you Xbox, I just have to call out this nonsense. I even have a solution, I have a few actually. 1. Unlock the software restrictions so that people can use whatever external drive they want. You could even only make it so that SSDs work with Xbox optimized games, I'm fine with that. And the second, make the proprietary Seagate connector available and cross compatible with any NVMe SSD on the market. This way people can buy any NVMe drive they want and have it work with the Xbox interface. And to anyone who is smarter than I am, and it's not saying much, find a way to replicate the Seagate's expansion connector and its speeds to topple their monopoly over Xbox storage. Well, that's my rant over. I mean, I, I hope you enjoyed me playing Halo in the background. I was going to play this on my old Xbox, but funnily enough, my Elgato was acting up and it didn't capture my Xbox, so I had to play it on my PC. Oh, and I have the Halo installed on my hard drive. I bet you didn't even notice. See you guys in the next video.